on State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple. Such a sad song. The one that... Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I'm your host, Devin Harris, and I'm here today to bring you more social media news. We're just going to jump right into it because there is something extremely crazy going on that scares the crap out of me. So, apparently, out of Wuhan, China, this coronavirus, this is a thing, around the Chinese New Year, um... People started getting sick. Everyone, there was a, a virus. It's a lethal virus that is kind of like being called the next plague. Um, it originated from Wuhan, China. And around the Chinese New Year, um, many cities in China had to be quarantined. So there's about 1,300 people that are infected right now. And it's rapidly spreading from China to so many countries like it's spread to France now France and China are are on you know not near each other at all so the fact that it's already reached France there's a case in the United States and there's a case um in other parts of the like there are cases in other parts of the world and that is so scary in China there are 30 million people grounded and um, in the U.S., 63 patients are being tested. So it's a lethal virus. People are dying from this. And the latest case is from a woman in Chicago in the United States. Um, China is apparently ordering a new hospital be- to be built in 10 days because this virus is so bad and they don't know how to contain it. And for me, I get sick really easily. So that's so scary to me. Um, and it's spread, spreading quickly, spreading rapidly. The symptoms are kind of vague, um, cough and fever, and I think sore throat or sneezing, but apparently the risk to America is pretty low. That doesn't really make me feel any better, because if you'd seen the movie Contagion in 2011, this reminds me of exactly that. So, Contagion with Matt Damon and Gwyneth Paltrow, where that virus broke out and people couldn't really leave their houses, and I feel like that's what we're going to have to, what it's going to come to, like, that's going to be the next, the next answer to wiping out most of the population so that we get all of our resources back and crowd control and everything. I feel like it's scary, but this might be, you know, the next plague. What's baffling to me is that people, China and all of the airlines, they're not really grounding any flights they're just giving people the opportunity to change their flights like at no cost to not go to china but they're not grounding any flights which doesn't seem very preventable in spreading disease like i would feel more comfortable if every flight from china coming into the u.s was grounded but that's not happening right now i don't know why um and So people, like, in the U.S., the U.S. airlines are just giving the people, giving everyone a free chance to change their flight um, without penalty. So whether they're, like, going to China, they're letting people switch and go somewhere else. Which, you know, doesn't really help when you have accommodations in China, but I guess a world outbreak. The officials, you know, like... um, the government and health officials are telling us, you know, stay calm. Your calmness is of utmost importance right now, but it's freaking scary. Like, um, I don't know if they're just not telling us how serious it actually is. 
But because the virus is lethal and it is spreading so fast, it seems like this could be um, a national, like, red concern very quickly. I've got all of this stuff I'm thinking of in my head. If it comes to America or if if somebody in my city comes down with it, I'm going to stay in the house and and keep my mask on and, you know, go all, like, apocalypse style on it. So it's, like, twisted to say it's kind of exciting to think about, you know, the world having to deal with something straight out of a movie but it's actually not exciting whenever it comes to, you know, lives and the fact that people are dying from this. All right, let's get into a social media minute before we go on our first break. So, Jennifer Aniston hosted Ellen. Ellen was out at the DMV getting her license renewed. I don't know if that was, you know, just a um, just a little spiel the dec- directors came up with to explain her absence um but jennifer aniston hosted ellen so after taking a home a sag award for her performance in the morning show which is an apple series where she plays a talk show host um ellen invited her on to guest host um and while she was on there she she surprised people who were friends and fans of her show friends so um the friends coffee the Friends Coffee House set was in Burbank, California. It is in Burbank, California, and is still open and available for people to sit on the couch and take pictures and go on tours and stuff. And so, whenever she was filming on Ellen, um, since the studios are so close, she decided to go on the set and hide behind the couch and then surprise her fans um, after asking them and giving them like surveys, like who's your favorite friend's character? And after nobody named Rachel, she would pop up and say, hey, I heard that. And super cute and surprise her fans and stuff. I love Jennifer Aniston. She's precious. And I feel like everything that's going on in the media recently with her and Brad Pitt, it just, it makes me feel like it's like early 2000s again. And I love it. Also on that episode, she interviews uh, Will Ferrell and Selena Gomez. Um, Ellen is played back-to-back-to-back on TV cable network, so I'm sure you can catch that episode if you do, please. Next up, the Jonas Brothers are doing a Las Vegas residency, which I am so excited about. Um, Friday, they announced their residency at the Park Theater MGM Resort. It begins April 1st. And I'm um, hands down the Jonas Brothers concert. I've been to probably twenty to thirty concerts in my short twenty three years on this planet, and the Jonas Brothers concert was the best concert I have ever been to. Probably because I was invested in it, and I went with friends. And alcohol is fun if used in moderation, but I was the most tired I've ever been. I literally did not sit down. Um, It was such a blast. I was invested. I think that's what it was. I knew every song. I was super invested. It was, like, surreal. Um, But they're going to be at the Park Theater at at the MGM Resort, and they're there until April 18th. So so check them out um, in Las Vegas. All right, finishing up. Taylor Swift, the Miss Americana TV trailer, or TV special, just dropped. And, um... In this, Taylor Swift gets a little bit candid, and she opens up about, you know, being a perfectionist, having to be perfect, having her opinions kind of, you know, um, closely monitored by her producers, by her people, and not being able to just be herself. And she she drops an F-bomb in the trailer, so if that's any, you know, eye into how real this is supposed to be, it looks pretty, pretty interesting. Um, she's totally unfiltered, totally unscripted, and it's going to focus a lot about, um, politics and stuff in the political climate, political climate of 2020. Um, but she also opened up about her eating disorder, about people th- calling her, you know, too thin, too fat, you look pregnant, and how that affected 
her day-to-day life and how she would just stop eating, um, which is crazy to me because she is so thin. She's known for being tall and lanky and the fact that somebody, eating disorders are cruel because they really are like not only a body disorder, but it's a mind disorder. Like body dysmorphia is real and it's evil, pure evil. But a Miss Americana releases on Netflix, Netflix, January 31st. So I'm going to be looking out for that. I think I'm going to give T Swift one more chance. Um, I like the song Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. I've been listening to that a little bit and I'm not really a Taylor Swift fan, but, um, seeing this, you know, I just want to give it a chance. Just want to give her a chance. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking about Michelle Carter, the teen involved in the texting suicide um, scandal. So Michelle Carter, whenever she was um, a couple of months, weeks shy of 18, she was found guilty in a murder trial where she um, encouraged her boyfriend, Conrad Roy, to commit suicide. And that is what we're going to be talking about next. She officially walks free, and uh, we're going to get into that. So stay right here with the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. We'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. if it's the allergy change or if I'm coming down with something I'm super nervous I'm gonna get coronavirus um but my throat is just killing me it's like my throat and my ears they're like connected that's basic anatomy so I this this case has always intrigued me the Michelle Carter murder suicide by text message um back a couple of years ago it was three or four years ago I had just finished high school um there were national headlines of this girl and her name was Michelle Carter um out of Massachusetts and she was convicted guilty um of killing her boyfriend even you know so she apparently told him several times over text message, you know, he was struggling with depression and stuff, and she told him several times, you need to kill yourself, you know, um, today, there's no, no day but today, you need to do it, you've been saying you're gonna do it for a while, so she was telling him, you know, to end his life, and he eventually did end his life by carbon monoxide, and she was tried and found guilty, um, for his murder, and sentenced to prison. She was months away from being tried as an adult because she was 17. But, um, so she got a light lenient sentence, which is total BS. And she officially walks free as of a couple of days ago. She's free and she's, she's out for being a model citizen in prison. So Michelle Carter was originally supposed to be, um, sentenced to, 2.5 2.5 years and her trial ended up being she ended up being sentenced for 15 months didn't even serve 11 months she was released after 11 months for killing someone like and the case is super interesting because no one ever be- like the jury you know no one ever before had dealt with a kind of murder suicide 
um, by like through text message. And so the law was really fuzzy when it came to um, having her serve and giving her jail time because this is something that no one had ever had ever seen before. You know, there hasn't really been a case like this, but as social media and, you know, mobile media and all of this stuff progresses as we get into a screen like culture this was inevitable to kind of happen um as we live our lives in front of our screens and not face to face things happen and you know crimes change and this just happened to be the first one so it's so interesting because the jury and the courts struggled to give her a sentence because they they'd never seen this before It's absolutely heartbreaking because the boy, um, I believe his name was Conrad Roy. They were in kind of like a long distance relationship. So they didn't see each other face to face a lot and they both struggled with mental health issues. So automatically that relationship was like toxic and unhealthy because it was based off of, you know, both of them being mentally ill, talking to each other and... I don't know if it was kind of um, like a buddy-buddy accountability partner like of, oh, you know, I'm going to hold you accountable for your own suicide. It sounded, you know, you have to be insane and out of your mind, mind and mentally unhealthy to convince somebody to take their own life, lives and think, you know, nothing's going to come of it. There's a documentary that I really want to watch called I Love You Now Die, The Commonwealth versus Michelle Carter. And it's produced and directed by Aaron Lee Carr, who also produced Mommy Dead and Dearest, so the Dee Dee Gypsy Rosalie, um, like, case. And that's, I feel like it's, that one was different because in her case, her mother was grooming her and feeding her all of this, you know, false information, completely cutting off her chances of living a normal life. And so, you know, whenever she found out, she did, I would, what I think is a pretty, she was angry. I feel like that's a pretty normal response to have whenever you feel like you've been lied to and, and isolated your whole life and she killed her mother. I feel like there's more leeway there than this case, but this documentary is directed by Aaron Carr and the documentary is interesting and I want to watch it because from what I've read it goes further than just you know um she she told him to kill herself kill himself like it goes deeper um and examines her mental illness and his mental illness her diagnoses and um from the reviews I've read it's an incredibly interesting documentary because people are saying it's not all what is, the the case is not all that it's presented to be um the media portray- portrayed her to be worse than she actually was which is crazy to me because on the outside it seems like you're a killer there's nothing more to it you're a psychopath but i want to watch the documentary um just to see you know, there's information that is not readily av- available to the general public if you're just watching the news. This series, it's um, like this documentary series is on HBO and it's a series in parts and it goes, takes you through the trial, the murder, and basically what happened was Michelle Carter, um, Conrad Roy was texting her like, uh, apparently he had plans to kill himself via carbon monoxide in his car and he was in the process of doing it and decided to stop and get out of his truck um he was going to put it in the garage and just leave it on you know a pretty painless of like in comparison to what you could do and so he was texting her i'm having second thoughts and she said get back in the truck and she just kept urging him on you know do it just do it you don't want to live like this anymore um to me it seems like they had kind of like a murder suicide pact that is just not being explained to the general public because that's a thing you know people hold each other accountable for that kind of stuff but also something 
that might go against that is Michelle Carter, who had no friends, was very socially reclusive. Um, she used his suicide to get attention from the people at her school. So that's a little bit of a, a shysty motive. But this is the documentary is called um, I Love You Now Die, The Commonwealth versus Michelle Carter. And it's an HBO series. I don't know where to find it. Um, I figured out, you know, this just came out a couple of days ago um, whenever she walked free. So I'm going to check that out. And I'll probably do a review on it over on the TV News podcast. Next up, the LeBrants are having their third child. Um, Savannah LeBrant from YouTube's Cole and Sav has been confirmed pregnant and she just released they just released their gender reveal video so we'll get into that and then later um a little bit of bachelorette drama one of the contestants from hannah brown season was found dead um this past week tragically so we'll get into that and more when we come back Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. you might know those of you who follow YouTube pretty closely um I follow a bunch of people but mommy and daddy lifestyle bloggers are not my thing um and there are certain subtypes and genres on YouTube so you have the lifestyle and travel bloggers um more specifically you know the people who travel and go on vacations and um go crazy places you have van life that's a specific you know subtype in on youtube um and then you have the foodies so people who cook um you have your lifestyle bloggers your fashion bloggers and then you have like your mommy and daddy kind of bloggers which is so weird um these family channels they film their families and their kids their births and their children like their their channel is focused on their children and that is so strange to me um and i think youtube is actually doing something to put this in check it was supposed to be in effect this year and whenever i first heard about it i thought oh my gosh um a lot of people are going to be out of a job but then further thinking about it it's like i don't i would feel weird filming my child's life all the time um so I feel like that's a really great barrier to put in place because all of these children that are getting like that are in these videos and just have their whole lives on camera for monetization is just it's sad and it's dangerous so I think that's a great little barrier that YouTube has put in place but the LeBrants so Let's just get into this. The LeBrants are one of the biggest mom and dad blog like vlogs on YouTube. They're YouTube stars Colin Sav of the LeBrant fam, and they're famous for being very religious. They're the, one of the highest viewed mommy and daddy channels, and they just revealed that they're having yet another baby. So they had their baby girl Posey last year, and it's been a little over a year since she was born, and they just announced they were having another one so they're busy 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 
Um, the LeBrants have had their fair share of scandals. So, apparently, you know, it's been speculated that they faked a break-in, you know, faked being harassed and, um, all of this stuff for views on their channel. And they, they do crazy challenges that sometimes people think, you know, you're putting your daughter in danger. So, for example, last to leave the pool gets a thousand dollars or whatever and they have you know their daughter and their infant child in a pool for 12 hours so it's just crazy and you know the length that people will go to to be successful and monetize their content on youtube and i kind of was super into youtube for a while and super into lifestyle blogging until i just got sick of it um, got sick of the clickbait and got sick of the titles, the scandals, and the drama. Um, latest, their latest is that their dog is now lost. So, um, that's, you know, their latest scandal. They're just clickbait central. But the gender reveal is now up. They're having another child. Um, Savannah had a child with a previous, um, a previous partner and she had a daughter named Everly, and then she married Cole, they had Posey, and now, less than a year later, they're having another kid, and they revealed, um, the baby reveal and the gender reveal not too far apart from each other, so, um, and I won't spoil, you know, what it is for those of you who actually like Cole and Sav of the LeBrant fam, but they're expecting a little one, and the sex has been announced. Alright, up next, we're going to talk about the Bachelorette contestant that was found dead. Tyler G. of Hannah Brown's season was found unresponsive and rushed to the ICU um, a couple of days ago. And TMZ was all over this. Despicable. Um, released the 911 calls and is now harassing the family to get information out of, you know out of them for Tyler's addiction. And so we'll cover that a little bit, and then we'll get into, there's this new app called Bite. So um, people are saying it's Vine 2. I checked it out, and I'll give you my first impressions. Thanks for tuning in with us on the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. We will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. if we've had a death on the bachelor franchise yet i think gia um from a long time ago um there was another pilot that was on suit like in the early 2000s um and i think she might have passed away but usually fatalities from the bachelor franchise 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 are few in numbers. But, unfortunately, a couple of days ago, the a, bachel- a bachelorette contestant from Hannah Brown's season um, passed away, and that was Tyler G. So, Tyler G. was the tall, um, super burly. Um, he had blue eyes and um, dark brown hair. They all looked the same, and they were all very handsome. Hannah Brown had some lookers in her season, 
Um, but this was the guy that um, went on the one-on-one -on -one with Hannah, the first one with the dirt wheelers, um, the four wheelers, and then mysteriously disappeared like a couple of weeks later. He was the one that um, he just left and there was no background as to why he was gone. That was him. Um, he was 29 years old and he, he died of, an, of a suspected overdose. So in the 911 call, which TMZ released, there's a female on the phone trying to, while she's calling 911, struggling to find Narcan, which is something that can quickly um, reverse the effects of an opioid addiction. Um, it's life-saving. And um, she was unfortunately too late because even though he was rushed to the ICU and alive and, you know, awake, he eventually did pass January 13th and he died in Florida of a suspected overdose, um, opioid overdose, and people are hinting that it was a heroin overdose, which is the most rough, um, my, my heart goes out to his family because addiction is a serious, serious beast. And for him to leave the bachelorette, you know, he must have been going through some things. And it, it makes sense now, but it doesn't make it any less heartbreaking. It just really goes to show that you really never know what somebody is struggling with. Because he seemed to be relatively healthy and have it together on TV, and this is what's going on, you know, behind the screen, behind the cameras, and it's an epidemic. It really is. TMZ got a hold of the release to 911 call because apparently all 911 calls are public property or publicly accessed in Florida, which is so sad. Um, and released that on TV and is now harassing the family for info about his addiction, which is just completely shameless. Like, I hope that his family heals from this, and I hope that they don't get harassed so much in the media while they're trying to process this. Hannah Brown hasn't said anything about it, but I'm sure she will. Um, some of the Bachelor, the Bachelorette contestants from her season have spoken out and given their well wishes to Tyler, Tyler's family. All right, when we come back, I'm going to be talking about the new Bite app. So it's been out for 24 hours. It's supposed to be Vine 2. Um, it's a new six-second social media app that encourages creativity. And a lot of um, influencers have already joined. I In my first five minutes, I took... Um, diligent notes, and so I'm going to be sharing those with you. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. So apparently there's a new app all out called Byte, and it has been out for 24 to 36 hours as of now, and it's it's spelled B-Y-T-E. I first saw this on Twitter. It's supposed to be like Vine 2. It's the same exact format. Six second videos, social media app, and a, it's supposed to, you know, it's calling card is it embraces creativity so um i downloaded it, checked it out spent like five minutes on it and this is what i learned in five minutes there are a lot of personalities that have already joined in 24 hours so cody co was on there 
and Julian Solomita, which anything Julia Solomita does, um, I'm a fan. Also, on an unrelated note, well, kind of related, Jenna Marbles, who, um, another internet personality, who originally turned me on to TikTok. I've been watching Jenna Marbles, the YouTube comedian, for years, and I thought TikTok was just a bunch of garbage until Jenna Marbles uh, made a video saying, you know, showing her viewers her favorite TikToks, and it was called, like, we watch my favorite TikToks together, and then she just released part two. And so anything Jenna Marbles thinks is funny, I give it a chance. And so I did. I downloaded TikTok, and I fell in love. We'll get back to that later. But Julian Solomita, her boyfriend, is on um, Bite already. So if, if for no other reason, to get Jen and Julian content, I'll keep up with Bite. So... The title screen um, of Byte is, it's a black screen with white text, and it says, In loving memory of Jacob Martinin. So, um, f- upon further investigation, Jacob Martinin was a producer of Byte, I guess, who passed. Um, so that was a cute, you know, little first thing. It's very different. First screen that I saw, it was, it was different. Um... <clears throat> It's pretty self-explanatory as far as um, it's six-second videos. And the content that I kind of absorbed in that six seconds and the five minutes I was on the app was not, you know, over-the-top funny. Um, it, it, it... Vine is dead, um, and there's really not much more to say than that. I don't think that, um, trying to be Vine's legacy is gonna work well for these people. I can't see this really taking off, um, because TikTok has come about, and it's so, it's gained, like, so, so much of a following. There's so many more features. There's so much more to do. And it's a longer video. You know, it's the same kind of crazy humor. Um, and it's longer than six seconds. I don't know. I, I just think the time and place for um, six-second media apps has come and gone. I don't know if it's the fact that the videos are only six seconds, but now that TikTok has come out and there are longer videos, it seems like um, it all seems so cheesy now, the six-second spiel. Um, also... In five minutes, I figured out there are a crap ton of furries on this app. Um, so much so that I wondered, is this, like, an app exclusively for furries? And, like, called Bite, like, B-Y-T, with a play in the words of Bite, like, as an, an animal. Um, and a furry is someone who has, like, an anthropomorphic interest in animals. So, like, animals with human-like features and... I was on Twitter, you know, searching up the bite hashtag, and it's just all of these furries. So, not for me. Um, I'm sure that those the people who really do miss Vine, the streaming app, will find this exciting. But I've moved on to TikTok. You know, Vine broke our hearts, and I moved on. You know, Vine's dead, and TikTok is very much alive. The interface for um, Byte is <clears throat> pretty intricate there's three different tabs popular now your mix and latest and then there's a whole bunch of different categories so there's comedy animation chill pets art experimental weird gaming fitness sports music food and a whole bunch of others in comparison to tiktok um which is mostly it's very hashtag based um and now it is developing further with ads um there are ads on things and people are getting you know um quickly just turning into a partnership thing um it's just more advanced tiktok is more advanced even though the byte interface is more specific so that's what i've gathered so far i don't think it's going to take off um unless they make quite a few adjustments but Byte is just, you know, um, they tried to model it after Vine. There's even a button that you could 
press to make the icon look like the old Vine icon. And I think it's just trying too hard. You know, the six second thing is dead and TikTok is in. When we come back, Tana Mojo has her own perfume and the video commercial for it is so funny. Um, I think I might buy it just based on the commercial um, that she just released on YouTube for her new perfume. So we'll get back into that when we come back. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Tana Mojo is <clears throat> YouTube's hot mess. Um, she's a YouTube personality best known for being messy. Um, she's been in tons of scandals. She married Jake Paul. She tried to do TanaCon a year back, which flopped. Um, and that's her brand. She 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 knows that she doesn't have it all together, and she kind of markets herself that way. Um, she's always been super problematic on the internet, and I think after she stopped trying to work so much against that and use that in her favor, that became, like, her thing. Like, the Tana way is, like, doing everything half-ass and um, getting away with it. Uh, so she just came out with a fragrance and the the commercial which i want to buy the fragrance just based on the commercial is her sitting down trying to come up with a name for this fragrance and it's her and all of her personalities like having a conversation about what to call it and in the beginning i didn't understand that this was the concept but as the commercial went on i understood oh the producer and the filmer and the marketingly they're all played by tana and they're all her different personalities so you have the the binge eating side or you have the the dramatic um breakdown tana you have drunk tana and you have um business tana uh it's super funny that she just released that on youtube um and i think the beauty in this is that she finally just went with it this is probably the best thing that she's produced. The Tana by Tana. That's what it's called. Tana by Tana. Um, and it's because she really worked off of her brand. So she's been doing a lot of stuff lately. Um, Tana turns 21. She released that MTV series. Uh, she released her wedding video with Jake Paul. <clears throat> she's working on music and stuff. She's just being, you know a baddie and she she doesn't pretend to have it all together she's has crazy story times um she's vulgar she's she's herself she's real you know um and i wasn't i've never been a big fan of tana i just thought she was messy but i feel mad respect for her after her releasing this video because it's just she's owning up to, you know, everything she is. So I think I'm definitely going to look into buying the fragrance. Apparently it has notes of, like, sweet sweet scents and fruity scents and stuff. And I bought the Dolan Twins perfume, and it didn't disappoint. But, again, it is an influencer perfume. It's not, you know, Versace or <laughs> Chanel. So we'll see. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. 
Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. If you like the podcast, subscribe to our various social media channels. We have a Twitter, we have uh, a Facebook, and we have, we're have we streaming on Spotify, Spreaker, and Apple Music. Anywhere where podcasts are streamed, basically. Um, thank you for listening to me. Thanks for coming back, and I'll see you guys next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program